Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to install and integrate Cisco Unified Communications Manager with Unity Connection, a subscriber, and uh, I am in presence. So this video is probably going to be longer than, well it's kind of hard to say. So I will put uh, some timeline references in the description if you want to go directly to a certain point. From where we're going to start we're going to use the free lab and at this point we have the Cisco Communication Manager Publisher installed. We haven't done anything with it at this point. So what we're going to do is get it prepped to add the subscribers um, as well as um, turning on the services and whatnot. And then we'll continue following up with the actual integration process once those appliances have been fully installed. So to begin we're going to go to the Publisher and log in under the CM Administration. And what we're going to do is similar, if you saw the previous video, we're going to do some of the same things as far as remove some of the DNS reliance. So in this case, we're going to go into our CUCM publisher here, and we're going to give it an IP address. So 192.168.202.11, and give it a description of the DNS name. Uh, UCM pub 1 we'll hit save and then now we're also going to do some preparation by adding some additional servers in here so we're going to hit add new and the first one we're going to do is add the another C, uh, CM and that's going to be IP address 192.168.202.212 and this will be CUCM sub 1 Save that. Then we'll go ahead and add one more for the I am in present server. So we'll call the CUCM IMP one and or I meant to put that in the description and then the IP address uh, 192.168.202 that 214 save that oops and the domain is cucmimp1.freelab.local okay now uh, we'll just keep going down the list here uh, let's see we'll go to the phone NTP reference Right, and we're just going to choose add new and put in the 192.168.202.253 and make that a unicast and see what else we have here um, we can modify some of the date time groups we can just edit the local in this case and I'll just make this let's see Mountain time with dots, month, day, year, 12 hour time, and we'll add the NTP reference. Save it. And let's see here. Um, we can go ahead and uh, start our LDAP integration. So We'll enable. Okay, and actually we'll do the LDAP once we turn on the service, but let's uh, just go down to the enterprise parameters to remove the DNS reliance. So in here we're going to put in the publisher IP address, 192.168.202.211. And we'll just copy this, paste all these in here. Looks good. We're going to save this. And what else? 
Um, under service parameters, you may want to choose uh, to change the TO, uh, T301 timers because for your um, inner digit timeout, because by default it's 15 seconds. So uh, let's see, go to call manager here. So T302. So you got 1500, so we'll make this 3000. So it'll be three seconds to save. So that way, if you uh, don't have a specific hard and it's waiting for uh, diff it's waiting for additional digits, it'll only wait three seconds. Okay, and. That should do it for this. So now let's go over to the service ability to turn on the services we want to use. So we got service activation. We're going to choose our publisher here. Okay, now in a lab environment, you can pretty much turn on everything, but in this case, I'm just going to turn on the stuff will more than likely use. So we got call manager, unify mobile voice, uh, CTI manager. TFTP server. And you need Axel, which is already enabled. And then we'll turn on the DirSync so we can finish our configuration on the LDAP. So we'll save this. Okay, it says operation successful. So now we can go back to the CM administration and set up, finish setting up our LDAP. So we will go to LDAP and directory add new and we will call this uh, pre-lab uh, AD how about that and then administrator at pre-lab dot in, um, local and our password and then we use the um, organizational unit of VoIP on the domain controller of free lab dot uh, local and let's see we can leave it um, automatically uh, sync every seven days and we'll put in the IP address 170 or 192.168.202.254 and hit save ah. Must have typed in the wrong password. Okay, add successful. Now we'll go down to the authentication. Enable authentication for end users. And again, we'll put in the credentials. And again, that was the organizational unit of VoIP, domain controller free lab, local, and the IP again. Save that. All right, and I think, just make sure this is still enabled. Okay, so I think we are good to go on as far at this point, since we've configured the servers, we've got the baseline for the publisher. Um, at this point, we can begin the installation of the subscriber for the um, call manager, as well as Unity Connection and IMN Presence.
Okay, so I'm going to open up here first here the subscriber and the I am in presence. So we'll power these virtual machines on. Okay, so on the subscriber one, we're going to skip the media test. Okay, and then we're going to obviously choose Unified Communication Managers, uh, Communication Managers, and what I wanted to point out to here is notice how it says product not supported on current hardware, and this was, if you saw the previous video, we used the OVA template. You use the same image and OVA template for Unity Connection, which we'll do next. The difference is you have to increase the hard drive space in order for it to actually show. So if you leave, in this case we selected one, I think it was a thousand node, uh, that had uh, an 80 gig hard drive. So you need to double that to 160 in that case in order to um, have this show up. So uh, but we'll go ahead and hit OK. yes for the version we want to install go through the wizard which is pretty much the same for all of these All right, and this one was CUCM sub 1 with an IP address of 192.168.202.2160 Um, and we're not going to enable DNS. All right, and then again, put in our SSL information. Now this is where it's different. It's saying, is this the first server in the node? And we're going to say no and OK and so please select yes if the installation should pause after this verification to allow the installation to be completed at a later time such as in a maintenance window or please no if the installation should proceed after the validation so we're gonna say no and now we put in the publisher information so this was the host name was CU CM pub1 the IP address of 192.168.202 dot two one one put in the password and if you weren't sure if you if you're on your publisher just go to the uh, Cisco Unified CM hit search or find and here you've got your CUCM pub one so that's what we put uh, right here just in case you forget or not sure what it is. Um, and we're going to say no for the SNMP and OK. So now this one's going to go off and install. So now we'll go to the I am in presence installation. So same thing. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to hit OK. Let me. Uh, let me pause this real quick. Okay, so it was tested successfully, which we knew would happen because it's an ISO image. Um, I know it's a long night, so I was getting too excited to get this installed because I'm gonna have to pause and wait for all of this to install uh, to continue. And uh, this is the only time I have to make this video, so I was hoping to get it done. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and then wait for the next prompt here alright so we'll go and choose our time zone Got next 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 like you've seen before we're not going to use DHCP and this one is going to be CUCM IMP1 the IP address of 192.168.202.214 and we're not going to use DNS and we'll put in the admin 
information. And now notice here, <clears throat> it automatically says this is not the first node in the cluster because you don't have an option because it's more tightly integrated with call manager now, so or communications manager, I should say. And uh, we'll again say no, so for it to proceed. Now we put in the publisher information again. So cucm pub one, the IP address one two one six eight two zero two dot two one one, and the password. Okay, and no, and we're <clears throat> done with that. So now at this point, I'm going to have to pause the video and wait for this to install. And so when we come back, we are going to first work with Unity Connection via SIP. In a previous video, I showed how to integrate it with Skinny, so I figured we'd use SIP in this example. Uh, we'll get that set up. Uh, some users created some endpoints and then um, get into integrating IM and presence. Hold on a second, I was missing one thing. We gotta install Unity before we can integrate it, right? So we've got our subscribers, the call manager or communications manager subscriber and the IM and presence subscriber to our publisher. That's what we're installing now. So let's install Unity connection, and then we'll integrate that via the SIP trunk. Got a little ahead of myself. So again, um, when we select this, you can see here, uh, I use the CUCM 11.5 install. The difference is when you hit choose edit settings here on the disk drive, or not floppy drive, disk drive here, it was at 80 gigs and I changed it to 160 and by doing that this is what's going to allow us to have unity connection show show up as an option to install so we'll power this up okay so we'll skip the media test okay so now this time we're going to go down here and choose the cisco unity connection and press ok And as you can see, this is very similar to all the other ones. There's like one screen that's different when it tells you about getting rid of the, or redoing the hard drives. Uh, but other than that, this is stuff you've seen many times before. Or will see many times if you build these labs. So this one we're going to call CU... Uh, CMVM1 or no this one in DNS was uh, CUCVM1 and IP 192.168.202.213 okay and we're not going to use DNS put in the admin info And we'll say yes. This is the first uh, node in the in the cluster because this is uh, a standalone portion. And we'll put in our NTP of 192.168.202.253. That's the CSR 1000V. If you saw the um, previous videos, and we'll put in the password again. Alright, and that's it for Unity Connection. So now we wait for the Unity Connection, the Communications Manager 
subscriber and the I am in presence to finish installing. This was that other uh, message I told you about when it's going to change your virtual disk. So we're just going to say reinitialize all. Now it's going to finish its installation. So this will take a while, so I'm going to pause this, and when we come back, we'll start with Unity Connection, with integrating Uni Unity Connection via SIP, get the subscriber services turned on, and then in, uh, integrate I am in presence. And then in the next video, well, and I should say, then we'll also set up some endpoints, do some testing, make some test calls um, through IP Communicator and some physical phones I have here in my home lab. Then um, in the next video, after we'll go over Jabber specifics once uh, the integration is done. So, see you in a few. Hello everyone and welcome back. And as you can see, the I am in presence and Unity connection is not yet installed completely. And you can see I'm using almost all my memory on the server. But, you know, I figured in the meantime, before it gets too late, because I, I was hoping to complete this video before the sun came up. So what I was thinking we could do is go ahead and get some users imported, get them set up, get some phones registered, and then once the other uh, subscribers are ready to go, then we can proceed with the additional um, integration. So to begin with, let's uh, go back to our publisher and log in. Okay, now we can go and check. We sh um, we may not have any end users because we haven't uh, performed a directory sync yet. So we can actually go over to the LDAP directory that we created earlier. And click on it here. And click on this perform full sync now. And hit OK. And this will take uh, a little bit. So you can see that it says update sync successful sync initiated and let's see here well actually looks like it may have been done already so let's try uh, end users and there we go we have YouTube A, B, C, and D and they're all enabled okay so now that we have our users let's create some endpoints and we'll start with on the remote desktop here we'll set up a endpoint for the IP communicator. So if we go to device and phone, if we hit find, you'll see that we don't have any. So I'll hit add and we'll choose the, let's see, IP communicator, hit next. And this one has an option to use skinny or SIP, so we'll use SIP. And then for the device name, we'll give this a uh, Something like YTA for YouTube A, because we, we've got user A. I'll have the um, IP communicator is user A, and then my three uh, endpoints that we'll be using here will be um, users B, C, and D. So we can give a description, put it in a device pool, and for the phone template, we're going to use the standard CIPC SIP and as you've probably noticed I'm not setting up calling search spaces or partitions in this video uh, just for simplicity so you can just go in and get it going just like if you're learning routers for the first time the very first thing you're not going to do is set up access lists, zone based firewalls and things like that when you're just trying to learn the basics on how packets flow so um, same concept here this is doing a base install um, so you can get everything integrated and then um, you know add more later as you get more experience with it um, so let's see so we've got all the main stuff here then we have to set a see a SIP profile and security profile so in this case this will be standard and then the security profile will say non-secure profile and that should be good for now. Let's see, web access is enabled. Okay. And then we'll give this one extension 2001. So after we hit save, then we'll have the option to add a line. 
So we'll say add new DN. We'll give this 2001. And um, something like that. Voicemail, obviously we haven't set it up yet, but you can see here if it's set to none, it's going to use the system default. And what I was thinking, we'll set the system default, um, instead of creating a new one, we'll just use the system default and configure it for SIP and set the pilot. So we can go ahead and set these up uh, as is. We'll hit save. Once it's saved, another thing you can do is down here on this associate end users to associate the end user with the phone and that's something that we'll need for presence later so we'll go ahead and add it um, now so I choose add selected and now this line appearance is associated with this end user and we'll hit save And so now, what, for the device name, that's going to be basically what we would use for a MAC address. When you configure a hard phone, you enter the phone's MAC address. In this case, we're going to set the device as YTA to get it to register. So, and also, you have to have administrative privileges. If you, if you run, if you just double-click on the IP commu communicator now, it'll work, but you can't edit any of the settings in it. So we're going to right-click and choose Run as administra Administrator. Okay, and then as this comes up, we're going to right click and go to preferences, and then under network, we're going to say use this uh, device name and change it to YT, YTA. And if TFTP servers aren't already specified, select use these TFTP servers and use the publisher in this case, 192.168.202.211, and press OK and we'll hit OK to restart IP communicator and now you can see it is now registered with extension 2001 that we just created so now as far as all the hard phones instead of going through and manually building them uh, to make things easier, easier if we go through the uh, Cisco Unified CM list here and we'll choose our publisher since that's what we're using primarily we can actually go down here and choose to set up auto registration. So what I'll do is just choose the auto registration template as well as the sample line template and we'll give it a range say 3001 to 3009 and then when I uncheck this box here this will um, enable the auto registration so I'll hit save update successful and you don't have to reset but since we're still waiting for everything to register why not so now if we go back to our phones we should start seeing devices auto registering so uh, here we got a 7985 uh, 7960 So I'll just pause this for a moment until the other two devices come online. Okay, so now it looks like we have everything. We have the Cisco CS, the 7985, a DX70. Those are the three hard phones. So then what we can do is actually, um, actually I'm behind me. Uh, so we'll say the 7985. We'll modify this to use the standard 7985 and this will say uh, YouTube user B so sign YouTube user B and Oops, I actually didn't mean to hit save yet, because uh, what I want to do is change the extension to 2002. And 
is YouTube user B. And we'll keep the profile to none because we'll be modifying that in a little bit. Um, save this. And then again, we'll go down and associate end users. YouTube user B, add selected, and save. Looks good. Then we will go to the DX70. And this one is going to be YouTube user C. And since this is on SIP, uh, we will need to set the security uh, profile as well as the SIP. So those look fine there. Save that and. This will be 2003. Save, and then again as associate this line with user C. And then finally, on the Cisco CS, this will be YouTube user D. So save that and then update the 2004. And again, add the end user. Okay, so now we got our phone and some users added. So let's check on the installation. Oh, still going. Okay, so we're making slowly but surely progress. Uh, looks like Unity connection is done and we're still waiting on IM and presence. Let's open another window here and click on the CUC voicemail, see if we can actually get in. And we can't, and that's because the services aren't turned up yet, and it's still cranking pretty good. So I guess the only other thing that I can think of off the top of my head until this finishes is, and we could have done it earlier, is on these actual lines, is to uh, go ahead and enable these, like for... Uh, to forward these to voicemail and change the busy trigger to one so there's no call waiting so if the line's in use you call it it'll go straight to voicemail so we can do this for our endpoints in the meantime and I'll pause and finish this up 
All right, so I went ahead and added the voicemail to the rest of the lines, and so I will pause the video again, and we'll wait till the other um, appliances are fully booted and ready to go, and then we'll continue on with our integration. Hello, and welcome back, and we have all of our services running finally. Makes me almost just want to make a quick asterisk video to show you how much easier it is. But in all seriousness, let's uh, go to our serviceability. Because remember, we did set up a subscriber. So at this point, this is where we can enable those. So we go to service activation, and this time choose our subscriber. And we'll choose the same services that we had before. So I'm going to check call manager, and it's telling me these need to be activated as well. We can use it as a TFTP server. We've got the axle, and everything else is integrated, so it's going to share the same database. So we can hit save, and OK. OK, these are now active. And another thing we can do is go back to our CM administration. And then if we go to our uh, CM group, at this point we can add our subscriber into the available call managers. And now for the moment we've all been waiting for, start the integration of Unity Connection. So both Unity Connection and presence need a SIP secure profile and they can actually they have the same parameters so what I'll do is go to the SIP trunk security profile if you choose find you can see the there's a non-secure uh, SIP trunk profile and we'll just copy this and I'll rename this to presence and how about presence and <laughs> voicemail and basically we're to keep everything the same except just check these the ones that have uh, accept and we'll save that and now we can create our SIP trunk to go to uh, unity connection so we'll say add new SIP trunk next And just call this one voicemail or something. Zip trunk to Unity connection. Use the uh, default device pool. And then uh, see inbound digits. We're using four digits extension, so we can make it. That. And then we'll also use the redirecting diversion header delivery inbound and outbound for that matter. So outbound right here, check that. And then we need our presence in voicemail security profile and we'll use a standard SIP profile. And then we'll give the IP address of Unity Connection which was the 192.168.202.213. Everything else can see the same, and we'll go ahead and save that. Yeah. I guess we can reset it. Why not? Then we'll go ahead and go to call routing and create a route pattern to go directly to Unity. And we'll say 7,000. And we're going to use our voicemail gateway. Route it, and this is going to be on net, and we don't need to provide outside dial tone. Go ahead and save that. Okay. Then we're under advanced features, we're going to voicemail voicemail pilot and we said we were going to modify the default so we'll go to the default here and we'll say the pilot number is going to be 7000 
and keep that the default save it and then we'll also do the same for the voicemail profile so the one the default voicemail profile um, just to verify it's already associated with 7000 if you create a new one you'd have a pull down where you can select that so that looks good there technically don't need to make any changes but hit save just for fun and that's pretty much it from the call manager side so now let's go into uni unity connection directly so we'll log in again Oops. all right so now we're going to go down to our phone system and I'm going to modify the one that's already there you could create a new one but here I'm going to add a port group and the type is going to be SIP and we are going to want to register with it um, but we have to save this first so let's see one nine, so our publishers at 192.168.202.211 uh, we could use 212 now as well for our subscriber but I'll go ahead and save this and then choose this register with SIP server and save and then we'll go ahead and add ports and we can give it two save alright and then we need to go to back to our port group to reset it so it says here reset required so we'll hit reset alright so now we're going to go down to port and then choose the phone system and under edit the Cisco Unified Communications Manager, that's the administrative XML servers. And we'll put in our uh, admin and login. Save that and add our publisher on port 443, which is secure HTTPS. And we can also add our publisher or a subscriber. It's getting pretty late. It's four in the morning. All right, four four three, and save. Let's see, failed. Make sure I get the password right. There we go. Typo. With no sleep. Imagine that. Alright, so now we can add users, but first let's do a couple of changes. So let's see, under the authentication rules for voicemail, since this is a lab environment, uh, we'll make it a little easier on us. We'll uncheck this for trivial passwords. And let's see, number of stored previous. Um, zero number of characters let's see length of three uh, we'll say never expires and save because this will be applied to any of the new users that you create and then we can actually go to the user template itself for a voicemail user and we can turn off the self-enrollment for the next sign-in and if we edit the password settings we can uncheck the user must change at next sign-in and then we can also change the password itself so everyone starts with the same default password so change password and it's going to be 123 123 and save now the thing is, if we try to import the users, will they actually show up? Well, if we go to import users, and we choose phone system, and find, nothing's there. Why is that? Well, if we go back to the call, uh, call manager, communication manager, manager, under edit user, when we 
select these users, we need to give them or assign what their primary extension is. As you see, there's none available. So what we can do is choose device association. And then for user A, we said that was the CIPC. So we can save selected. Go back to the user. Save. And then now when we go down, we'll see the primary extension 2001. So we can save that. So then we go back and we'll use that for YouTube user B. That was, we'll go to the devices, assign it to 7985. Save selected changes. Back to user, save, and add the primary extension. Now I'll pause and do this for the rest. Okay, so now you can see that they all have their own meeting numbers and they've all been assigned a primary number. So now if we go back here and click on find again, now we see all the imported users and we can select them and click on import selected. And we have number of successes, four. So now we have all of our users with those templates that we have just created. Now the Unity connection is done. So let's do some quick testing. On our IP communicator, if we hit our voicemail button, you can see that it dialed extension 7000 and it's currently connected. Now we can't hear it because it's on the uh, remote desktop, but let's test the other lines now and see what we get. Okay, so now in this example, I'll hit the voicemail button. Enter your pin, followed by pound. And we use one, two, three. YouTube user B. Hello. To send a message, press two. You have no old messages. For setup options, four. To exit, star. For help, zero. Enter your PIN, followed by pound. YouTube user C. Hello. To send a message, press 2. You have no old messages. For setup options, 4. And of course, even though they don't make them anymore, the CS is always pretty cool. So now we can also call the IP communicator, so 2001, sorry, YouTube user A is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press pound for more options. How come you're not answering YouTube user A? Call me back. And now you can see the message waiting notification on the CIPC. Okay, so now we have successfully validated that Unity connection is working with the SIP trunks. We're able to dial into voicemail using our user profiles, leave messages, get our message waiting indicator via SIP notify messages. So all good there. Now the next thing is to integrate uh, presence. So from Cisco Call Manager at this point, since we already created that um, SIP profile, all we really need to do at this point is create another SIP trunk. So we'll say add new, zip trunk, next, and we'll say, we'll call this presence, give it the default device pool, 
and then uh, all we have to do is give it the presence and voicemail security profile as well as the standard SIP profile and then just the IP address 192.168.202.214 and save. Hit OK. And we can reset it if we want. And literally, at this point, from call manager perspective, you're done. Except for the Jabber setup, which we'll do in the next video. So now what we do is we go over to the IM and presence and log in. Well, and actually, we should go to the serviceability to turn on the services we're going to be using. So, tools, service activation, and we're going to choose CMIMP, or CIMP, I should say. And I'm going to say check all, but then uncheck the uh, connection manager, SIP federation and XMPP because we're not I'm not doing any clustering and hit save okay okay so now that all the services are active we can go back to CMIM and presence in administration and we're going to choose presence gateways uh oh My son's waking up. All right, got to pause the video again. I'll be right back. All right, so I am back again, and we are going to go ahead and add a gateway. So we'll say add new, and we'll put in uh, our publisher. Save that. And then under uh, Presence, Setting, and Standard Configuration, uh, we'll go ahead and choose the Presence trunk group that we had set up and hit Save. And then under Presence, Routing, Settings, we can choose the default Cisco SIP Proxy TCP listener, Save. And that is it as far as the integration is concerned. And within the IM and presence, you can go to the system troubleshooter to get a look at uh, any of the warnings. And we'll be coming back to this again in the next video because we need to set up our users for uh, to be able to use Jabber and integrate with presence. So um, that's where some of these messages are here. But everything else looks good. The engine looks good. Proxies troubleshooter's good, we're not using Microsoft RCC. So uh, yeah, so everything is good to go and like I say in the next video we'll clear up this error once we get the users configured for Jabber and uh, do some more testing. So thanks for hanging in there and I hope this has been informative for you and I will see you in the next video.